Hello, everyone. I'm really excited to welcome you to Vision Day 2022, happening in 2023. So uh, welcome. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm Adar Avrabuchalor. I'm a new faculty member at Tel Aviv University, and I'll be moderating this first session. Before we get started, a, a few things. So all the talks will be uh, streamed live on YouTube, and you'll have uh, the recordings will be available afterwards as well. Uh, there's a link on the conference website, so you can, you can easily find it. Um, we're already starting late, so we'll do our best uh, to stay on schedule. We have a very packed um, program, but with lots of really great, interesting talks. I want to thank our uh, sponsors. Of course, this couldn't have happened without you. So Google, Google, Amazon, Applied Materials, Mobileye, Samsung, RTC Vision, Qualcomm, and GM. Thank you, and they deserve a round of applause for, for sure. So we're going to start the morning session now with six talks, starting with Graph Neural Network for Cell Tracking in Microscopy Video uh, by uh, Tal Ben Chaim and Tami Rivkin Raviv. So thank you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our talk. My name is Tal Ben Chaim, and in this talk, I will present you our approach to the cell tracking problem in microscopy videos using a graph neural network. This work was presented at the last ECCV, and it is part of my master thesis under the supervision of Professor Tamir Iklin-Raviv. Cell tracking in microscopy video is a common tool for the study of biological system and, proce and processes. Given the microscopy sequence, tracking of individual cell in the sequence mainly relies on two key elements, identification of the cell in the sequence of frames and association between cells in consecutive frames. In this work, we focus on the association part, where the main goal is, to, is the extraction of the full cell path and the cell lineage tree for the entire sequence, as illustrated in the video. The cell tracking problem poses many challenges, such as random cell movement, cell division, shape variation, overlapping tracks, unclear boundaries, and high variability within and between data sets in terms of appearance, morphology, dynamics, and density. In addition, the number of cells in each frame may vary from just a few to hundreds. Cell tracking method can be broadly divided into two main approaches. A local approach where cell tracks where cell tracks are generated by associating cell instances in consecutive frames, solving the problem in a greedy and therefore suboptimal manner, and a global approach in which complete cell trajectory are simultaneously extracted. For both approaches, there are obviously classical solutions. Some recent methods address cell local cell tracking using deep learning, and to the best of our knowledge, we are first to propose a deep learning method to globally solve the cell tracking task. In this work, we present an end-to-end -end deep learning model which allows to solve the tracking problem in a global manner and simultaneously extract all cell trajectory in the entire sequence. We represent cell instances in a, as a graph nodes and their potential association by the edges. A few of our main contributions include a deep metric learning framework to learn the initial node uh, features given the annotated microscopy sequence and the novel message passing scheme for the edge and node feature updates. Eventually, cell tracks are extracted by classifying the edges into active and non-active. The input to our problem is a full microscopy sequence of moving cells, along with their annotation or segmentation maps. We represent cell instances as in their association using a directed graph G. Cell instances represent the nodes in the graph, while the potential association represents the edges. Our goal is to extract the maximal path in the graph which represent full cell trajectory by classifying the edges into active and non-active. To build a graph representation, special temporal cell features are extracted for the nodes, like cell center coordinates and intensity statistics. We also use deep metric learning to learn, to learn cell features 
that will allow to group together instances of the same biological cell while distinguishing bet between different ones in the embedding space. I will illustrate the proposed deep metric learning approach using a subsequence of three frames as shown in the slide. Let's suppose we have an anchor sample which as an instance of biological cell appears, appears in the first frame. We consider instances of the same biological cell as positive example, while on the other end, the negative example are all instances of different biological cell. In the same way for another anchor, and so on, we aim to cluster instances of the same cell together and distinguish between different ones in the embedding space. Then in the feature space, negative examples are separated while the positive ones are closer to each other. The core of our method is the graph neural network, GNN, where the main goal is to extract maximal paths in the graph that represent full cell track. The key block is the message passing that has two main components, learn mapping, fun learn mapping functions such as MLP and aggregation operation like average, minimum, or maximum. Exploiting the GNN model enable us to simultaneously trace entire cell tracks, razors, and locally associated cell instances in a frame-by-frame -frame manner. Let's illustrate the power of the GNN. In the first update, we are using neighbor nodes from the previous fr frame for the updates. After this step, every node has been influ influenced by the first order nodes. In the next update, we focus only on the update of the nodes in the T plus one presented frame. We again update the nodes in this frame using the previous frame nodes, but those nodes have already been influenced in the first update. It means that in the next update, the nodes are influenced by the nodes that are two frames far away. And so on. In the L step, the nodes are influenced by the nodes, by the nodes that are L frame far away. One of our main contribution is the proposed message passing block. The block contains two updates one for the nodes and the second for the edges. As illustrated, the node update uses an edge attention mechanism where the weights are learned based on the edge features. Next, we are using the obtain node information to learn a new edge representation. The node and the edge updates are performed in a recursive manner. This interplay between the nodes and the edges help us to learn better representation for the edge classification. Using the edge features from the last step, we can classify the edges as active and non-active. To do so, we use a simple MLP model. Now we can look at the paths in the graph, extract the tracks of each cell in the sequence, and construct the cell in the trees for all the sequence. We divide the training process into two steps. First, we use multi-similarity loss uh, to train the feature extraction model using deep metric learning techniques. Then this network is frozen, and we wish to classify the edges into active and non-active. So it defines a binary classification task. This is the reason why we use the weighted binary cross entropy to update the parameter of the entire network in an end-to-end -end fashion. We evaluate our, our method on several data sets. The first one is very challenging open data sets that contain multiple sequences under four growth factor conditions. For this data set, we evaluate the result in two different settings, regular setting and low frame rate setting, where we render five times faster cell dynamic using sampling of every fifth frame. We measure the performance of our method using two metrics, association accuracy and target effectiveness. The association accuracy is a frame by frame accuracy measure that is defined by the ratio between the, the number of true positive association and the total number of ground truth association similar to the IDF1 measure in the multi-object tracking liter literature. And the target effectiveness measure considers the entire path and quantify the ratio of the cell path that match the ground truth track. We value the performance of our method under four different dataset conditions, while also computing the average overall. And as I mentioned, the results are evaluated in two settings. First, in a regular setting, we compare ourselves to classical and global solution that also use graph formulation, and we also compared uh, ourselves to local greedy deep learning methods, which reported state-of-the-art result. We outperform all the previous methods in almost all factors. 
And second, in a low frame rate setting, we compare the result to a method that was designed for this specific task, and yet we got better scores. We also participate, participated in the cell tracking challenge. This challenge is an objective way to explore our tracking results, where the participants submit the result for the test data and their code, and the challenge organizers reproduce the result using the code and evaluate them against the challenge metrics. We have submitted our result for five very different data sets, including 2D and 3D data sets. Our method was ranked in the top four for all the submitted data sets. In three data sets, we rank first, and in another one, we, we rank second. Finally, we conducted an ablation study in order to illustrate the contribution of each one of the components in our model to the obtained tracking result. The first column represents the contribution of the spatial temporal uh, features. The second column corresponds to the learned features. The third one is the proposed encoder in the message passing scheme. And the fourth emphasizes our contribution in comparison to various uh, message passing methods. The last two columns represent the results. In the first three, uh, three rows, we give a comparison to two popular methods of message passing, graph convolutional and graph attention network. We show that the proposed message passing is indeed better to our uh, problem. In addition, the proposed encoder improved the results. And the last few rows um, illustrate the contribution of each one of the feature tabs that we used. And we can observe that the model containing all the components achieved the best performance. To summarize our approach, uh, we simultaneously extract all cell trajectory in the entire sequence. We are first to apply a GNN and message passing mechanism as a solution to the cell tracking task. We represent cell instances and their feature as node in a, direct, in a directed graph and connect them by edges, which represent the potential association in consecutive frames. We learn features that cluster together same cell instances and separate cell instances that are not of the same biological cell. We focus on the edge feature and introduce a new GNN block that enable mutual node and edge feature updates. We address the cell tracking as an edge classification problem for identifying active and non-active edges. And last, the proposed framework is shown to outperform most of the current state-of-the-art cell tracking method for a variety of well-known publicly available microscopy data set. Thanks for listening. Our code is publicly available, and you're welcome to visit our project page in Git. Thank you very much. Are there any questions from the audience? We'll be walking around with mics. We can take a question or two. If the volunteers uh, for, the mic, for helping with the mic can come down, that would be great. Hi. Uh, in the previous work on this topic, you had an LSTM modules that help you to, to, to perform in semantic segmentation. Did you drop this, or you still use it? Uh, we use the, the semantic segmentation as, a, as input to our, to our model. We detect first the, the cells. And then we apply our algorithm with the uh, uh, tracking. And another one, when you run the experiment with uh, uh, subsampled uh, video sequence, do you, have, do you somehow update or tune your, your model, or you use it in exactly the same manner as you use it for the full-size video? Can you repeat again? I mean, when you, I mean, when you run uh, your initial test, you use the whole sequence, all the frames. In the second experiment, you use each fifth frame. So the, the, the network that you use is exactly the same one in both cases? I'm, I'm not sure I, I got you, but uh, I, we train with only 10 frames uh, during the, the training. And during inference, we are, apply our algorithm and infer all the, the sequence at once. If okay. Okay. Does it answer? Okay, thank you. Would you like to take a mic? Uh, Tommy said the answer is yes. Okay, let's thank our speaker again.
Okay.